Teachers' unions are among the fiercest critics of charter schools, and that should come as no surprise. Charters mostly hire non-union teachers, and they take funding from unionized district schools. What is surprising is that the very idea of charter schools began in part with a union leader. Al Shanker was the longtime radical head of the American Federation of Teachers. And in 1988, he was maybe the most important champion of the charter idea. In fact, he was the first person to use the words charter schools in a national newspaper. So what changed? To understand that, we have to go back to the 1980s, when a panic was spreading about the state of American education. A 1983 report called A Nation at Risk argued that America itself was being eroded by a rising tide of mediocrity. Look at the record. Federal spending on education soared eightfold in the last 20 years, rising much faster than inflation. But during the same period, scholastic aptitude test scores went down, down, and down. The classroom should be an President Ronald Reagan blamed the professional bureaucracy of education. And in part, Al Shanker did too. For decades, as a teacher and activist, he had complained about the burden of bureaucratic interference. Now that word professional is becoming to be more and more of a dirty word for teachers. It is a word with which the administrator, use, which the administrator uses when he turns around anything which he doesn't like that the teacher is doing. He says, you are not being professional. Be good. Be obedient. But Reagan wanted to fix things with privatization. School vouchers, school prayer, even dismantling the Federal Department of Education. Schenker had a different vision. He'd just returned from a trip to Germany, where he visited an experimental school run by teachers. They wrote the curriculum, they chose their own roles and their own students, and test scores went up. I think he was prompted by the idea that teachers who had lots of great ideas didn't necessarily have the opportunity to implement them. And so he wanted to provide a vehicle for teachers to be able to experiment. Shanker imagined hundreds, even thousands, of these small learning communities spread throughout the country. And to name them, he borrowed from an obscure school administrator and professor named Ray Buddy, Education by Charter. Shanker liked the phrase. He thought it evoked explorers out to discover new worlds. So he used it, and the phrase made its first appearance in print in one of Shanker's weekly pieces in the New York Times, Charter Schools. But already there was a problem. From the beginning, it wasn't clear just how charters were supposed to work. Were they partners or competitors, woven into the fabric of public education or just paid for by public funds? Shanker promoted charters as safe spaces for educational innovation inside the existing system and very definitely unionized. But even Shanker could see that charters would also compete with the traditional model. And many in the business world focused on that competition as a way to disrupt the enormous bureaucracy of education. And that split made its way into law from the very beginning, like the 1993 bill that introduced charter schools to Massachusetts. Half of that bill says that new schools will allow teachers to experiment. The other half says they'll enforce competition and accountability. As states began to pass their own ed reform laws, Shanker watched as that competitive view of charter schools won out. In the end, he walked away from his own idea. By 1993, he dismissed charter schools as a mechanical gimmick. And that was the beginning of the fight that continues today. <laughs> 